Welcome to News Click. Today we'll be revisiting the Rafale fighter jet uh, issue, which we have covered in the past. And now that News Click has been sent a legal notice by Reliance uh, Anil Dhirubhai Ambani Group through its solicitor, uh, we want to make it very clear that in public interest, uh, News Click's search for truth will continue and will persist with the inquiry and uh, wherever it takes us. So to discuss it today, once again, we have with us D. Raghunandan, who, has, who is a defense expert, particularly in, uh, given his uh, uh, expertise in aeronautic engineering and his uh, work with uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in the past. Uh, it becomes even more important to discuss the matter with him because he's written and talked uh, uh, at length on, on, this, on this matter in the past. Uh, welcome, Raghu. Uh, we are re going to revisit this issue because I think in the light of the public statements that have been issued by the company, it becomes even more important that we at least clear the dust and uh, come down to the brass tracks where the real issues are concerned. So I'll begin with asking you that uh, the letter that was, uh, the public statement that has been issued uh, yesterday makes it very clear that uh, the present offset servicing obligation does not have anything to do with uh, manufacturing of the 36 fighter jets, either the 36 fighter jets or future production of these fighter jets in India. Given this uh, fact, and which is what we have been talking about at length, uh, the real issues have been uh, diverted from. Uh, what I mean is that the real issue to begin with was to buy 18 and manufacture the rest in order to create defense indigenous capability in the field of air. Would you take us through this whole past and the reasons why we went into it before we come to this whole uh, uh, controversy over the offset. Well, very briefly, uh, India had first put out a uh, request for uh, proposals for a uh, multi-role combat aircraft. Uh, India had not specified their weight or the number of engines they would have, etc. But after some time uh, had elapsed, that same uh, uh, request was changed to a medium multi-role combat aircraft, thereby specifying that it would be a medium weight uh, aircraft, which in a sense ruled out the single engine aircraft. But when the tenders were uh, then invited, uh, they were shortlisted, leaving out the single engine aircraft going earlier, leaving the three uh, twin engine uh, aircraft, out of which the FA-18 uh, Super Hornet was ruled out as being perhaps too old and not suited for what the uh, Air Force wanted, leaving the Eurofighter and the Rafale. And extensive field trials were carried out based on uh, uh, different conditions uh, available in India, the kind of profiles of flight the aircraft was expected to be uh, put through. And based on that, decision was taken to float the uh, actual uh, tender uh, for 126 uh, MMRCA. And between the Eurofighter and the Rafale, after these extensive field trials uh, were undertaken, the Rafale was chosen as the preferred uh, option. So that's where things stood. And this number of 126 was uh, specified by the Air Force, agreed to by the Defense Procurement uh, uh, Council, agreed to by the Union Cabinet, when suddenly overnight, the Modi government decided to uh, scrap the earlier tender on the grounds that price negotiations were not headed 
in the right direction, that there was no solution to it, and decided to purchase 36 Rafals outright. Why are these the numbers so important? Yeah, well, uh, to put it simply, uh, India had been experiencing a shortfall in the total number of fighter aircraft available to the country, basically because of the obsolescence of the MiG-21 mm -hmm. uh, aircraft, and after which you had had a series of acquisitions of small numbers of other aircraft. You had the Mirages, you had the Jaguars, um, but the numbers that you wanted, which were earlier being provided by the MiG-21s, mm -hmm. you didn't have those numbers anymore. And the indigenous LCA was not quick enough in coming to development which could substitute for the mix. And therefore, the Air Force was finding it hard-pressed to meet its uh, requirement, which it had uh, placed at 42 squadrons. And given the rates of obsolescence, it was looking as if India would be heading for an Air Force strength of only 26 or 27 squadrons uh, down the road, which is why then 126 aircraft were called for for Rafale. Now, so obviously, this was something which was in tune with the strategic assessment. That's right. And it was to meet that. That's the, right. The, 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 the possibility That's right. of war scenarios, two That's war right. scenarios. That's that right. They settled That's for right. this number. So and the number is very important. The number is critical, in fact. And even today, uh, the Air Force is reiterating its requirement of a squadron strength of 42 uh, squadrons. And even with the acquisition of 36 Rafales, which is just two squadrons, they are going to be left a 10 or so squadrons short of what they would be uh, looking for. Which is why, ironically, having scrapped the earlier uh, tender for 126 aircraft, having reduced it to a straight outright purchase of 36, whereas the 126 were to be acquired through 18 acquired uh, by purchase, and the remaining aircraft to be manufactured in India by uh, 108, 108 to be manufactured in India. Now with 36 being bought outright, there is no Indian manufacture, there is no Indian acquisition of technology. But having gone through all that and cancelled the deal for 126 in favour of a 36 aircraft deal, the government has once again floated a request uh, for proposal for another 100 plus uh, aircraft, which meant, which means that that requirement for a hundred and odd aircraft still remains. Okay, so if you come to the offset part of it, it's very clear that by reducing the number, you are actually reducing your capacity to negotiate a better bargain with the company from which you're buying the capital right. good, right? right? Which is means that we have weakened our case in so far as that is concerned. Right. But if you look at the present scenario yeah. of how the offset is going to be serviced, yeah. where it seems that uh, Reliance, uh, the, uh, Anil Ambani, uh, Anil Dhirubhai Ambani Group is uh, looking for cornering up to 21,000 crore rupees through its two joint ventures, one with the salt and the other with Thales, yeah. because the bulk of the offset would be serviced by the salt of 15,000 crores, followed by Thales of rupees 6,500 crores, and it's only after that Safran and MBRD would be servicing uh, roughly 8,500 crores, uh, that amount of it. So given that, how do you look upon, if you have looked at what they plan to do, what do you make of it? See, it's very clear that if you are purchasing only 36 aircraft, and that too you have specified that these are going to be in a flyaway condition, mm -hmm. a very significant part of the aircraft cannot be manufactured mm -hmm. Uh, in India. So the offsets, because it's a mandatory requirement, will somehow have to be done in such a way that some manufacturing would be done here, maybe for towards these 36, maybe not towards these 36. Well, the, the, the company statement says that it has no part, it's 100% would be manufactured in France and brought. And brought here. So what seems to be now being done is, 
you somehow have to justify spending 50% of the uh, contract within India, which is done in one way or another, but may not have anything to do with the Rafale deal itself. I have read statements to the uh, effect that, and this is something which I have been saying on this uh, uh, on our channel, that it's very surprising that the Ambani group and some of the other groups selected for the offsets are groups which have virtually no experience, uh, not only in aeronautical manufacture, but in any kind of manufacturing business. And I've read statements to the effect that the Ambani group have said that this is irrelevant since the Rafale is not going to be the ones manufactured here. But my question is, even if Rafale is not being manufactured, if other aeronautical components are being manufactured here, my argument would still apply that this is a group with no experience in those matters. And therefore, I find it surprising that uh, the assault would have selected this group on its own unless they have been nudged in that direction. So there seems to be a lot more that needs to be probed and oh, looked sure. at. Yeah. And one final question before we conclude today's interview. Uh, uh, the, 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 there are other companies also. I mean, the public statement by the, by, by the company, Reliance Company, has also pointed out that there are uh, hundreds of other companies that are going sure. to be partners. But if you look at the joint ventures that have been signed, in which there is Bharat Electronics Limited also, with Thales uh, uh, Corporation, which is part of the Rafael project, and some other companies. What do you make, or what do you think would be the size of the offset which would be serviced by, by, uh, by the Reliance Group uh, through its joint ventures and by others? Do you have any idea of what would be the size I, of I it? cannot say authoritatively, yeah. since no uh, figures have been uh, put out. Well, uh, but the company claims that they will only be servicing 25%, which seems extremely doubtful. Well, it could be if you remove some of the uh, radar components, if you re remove some of the electronic warfare components, mm. there's a significant uh, component of the offsets which uh, relate to the uh, design development of the Kaveri mm. uh, engine. Which has which also is, been added to this. Which has been added as part of the same uh, uh, deal, which is going to be between Snecma, the engine manufacturer, and Hindustan Aeronautics. The two of them have had a long collaboration. But uh, this preceded uh, on, uh, the uh, Rafael absolutely. project. So, you see, the point is that once you configure offsets purely as a monetary transaction, rather than as a technological yes. transaction, then all these things start happening. Then you want to find some justification so you can start making tires in this country and show them against offsets. But, uh, it, will as not well. serve but it will not serve the purpose of acquiring technologies. Okay, or, sir. as in this case, you've got a Kaveri engine development going on, so you tie up with the similar uh, jet manufacturer and show it against this project because you have to build up that amount to 50%. But one final question before we conclude today is that it does raise a question, Raghu, that if the number of fighters is going to be less than what it was, uh, what the IAF wanted, then it does raise a question that what happens to national security assessment, threat assessment, threat scenario? I mean that it can be given a go-by without any to discussion me, or debate? To me, that is the most amazing part of this Rafale. Uh, deal, which defies any explanation, mm. and with all these charges and counter charges taking place now, till date I have not come across any justification by the government given for suddenly changing a 10-year-old decision for a requirement for 126 aircraft, suddenly to reduce it to 36. And then to find two years later another contract for 108 aircraft being put out, which shows that that strategic assessment has not changed as far as the Air Force uh, is concerned, which then still leaves this huge question mark about why it was reduced to 36 in the first place. The point I want to make is India has gone through a decade or more of tinkering with different procurement rules 
precisely to bring in more transparency. In this deal, we have found that this entire exercise has been thrown to the winds and all transparency is gone because those same defense procurement rules have been thrown aside in favor of a government-to-government -government deal. Thank you, uh, Raghu, for today. We'll be revisiting this issue again and again because it's in public interest to know, especially because it deals with the military sector and national security as the company itself makes it very clear, which obliges us news in the news click to pursue this matter, which we'll uh, continue to do. Uh, we would uh, love to have your feedback on, on this interview. If you have anything to say, write to us. Uh, thank you very much for watching News Click.